Hello aviators, how are you? My name is Manga Nordal, I am an airline captain and instructor. The theme for this video is fuel emergency. Running out of fuel is something we pilots never want to happen. But from time to time things don't go as planned. In most of those cases it's the weather that doesn't cooperate. You know, predicting the weather can be a challenge and as they say, it's difficult to predict, especially about the future. In this video I will discuss an incident that happened in 2021 when an airline had to descend below approach minima and land with minimum fuel in the tanks. In the second half of the video I will discuss the regulations regarding this. In the morning of 22nd November 2021 the flight crew of Qantas flight 1616 operated by Fokker 100 from Network Aviation prepared a flight from Perth to Paraburdu. I hope I pronounced this correct. Due to a high payload, the airplane would depart with minimum required fuel. This included 10% route reserve, 60 minutes reserve alternates, and 30 minutes final reserve fuel. This should not be any problem as the weather forecast at the destination was well above minima. So the crew expected this to be a routine flight. The first officer would be pilot flying and loaded the Paraburdu into the FMC, the flight management computer, as route number one, and Karata, the most distance alternate, as route two. Therefore, the FMC was calculating the fuel required for both airports. It is worth to mention that Paraburdu does not have air traffic services. Instead, it has an automated weather information service, which records current weather conditions and broadcasts the information on a dedicated frequency. The runway lights and the puppy lights are activated by the pilots. The airport has instrument approach procedure for both runways. At 06.19 local time, the flight departed Perth in 92 passengers and 5 crew on board. The planned flight time was 1 hour and 29 minutes. One hour later, the crew listened to the automated weather information service, which reported good weather and wind favoring runway 06. Consequently, the crew set up the aircraft for an Arnav approach to runway 06. This approach was flown as Elnav and not Elnav Vinav. The difference is that with Elnav Vinav, the autopilot can follow the vertical profile all the way down to minima. With Elnav alone, the pilot must use vertical speed mode, VS, and cross check the position with the published altitude shown on the approach chart. During the approach, the crew observed they had tailwind, and the cloud layer was thicker than expected. When they reached minima, they could see the runway and the puppy showed four white lights, which meant they were too high. So they made a missed approach. Good decision. Afterwards, the crew agreed that the tailwind had set them too high on the final. They checked the avis again, which indicated broken clothes at 800 feet and overcast at 1500 feet. And the visibility was reduced to 5000 meters. This was still above minima. The crew set up for an Arnav approach to runway 24, expecting to land this time. However, the weather continued to deteriorate, and when they reached minima, they could see the ground, but not the runway. And for the second time, they made a missed approach. Normally, you will go to an alternate airport after two missed approaches. The problem was that they didn't have updated weather information for the airports nearby. Since the weather had deteriorated, they suspected the weather could have deteriorated at the other airports as well. They now had fuel for 40 minutes plus final reserve. The commander ruled out Karata as he concluded they didn't have enough fuel. Solomon was also ruled out as the approach minima was higher than at Paraburdo. Newman could be the best alternate. The captain called Melbourne Centre and requested the latest weather for Newman. However, he did not inform about the fuel status, so the controller felt there was no hurry. 
It would take 15 minutes before Melbourne Centre had the weather for Newman. By then, the crew of Flight 1616 had decided to stay at Parabudu. They considered the weather system to affect all of the airports in the area, and they would far better if they stayed there. After a while, they conducted a new approach to runway 06. Again, they had to go around. The crew was committed to land at Parabudu. The aviation regulations allowed the commander to break the rules in the interest of flight safety. The commander understood that if the weather didn't improve, they would have to descend below minima to land. The fuel indicators now showed 12 minutes plus final reserve. The pilot changed roles and the captain became pilot flying. The flight crew discussed the options which were to either comply with the missed approach criteria and declare mayday fuel situation, if not visual, at the missed approach point, or continue below MDA for a landing if they were not visual at the minima. They agreed to continue below MDA for landing. The pilot flying then emphasized to the pilot monitoring that they both needed to be prepared to call go around if either of them sensed the approach was becoming unsafe. At 0837, they commences the approach to runway 24. They become visual with the runway at about 300 feet below minima. They were slightly off the runway center line and on the puppy. At 0843, the aircraft landed without further incident. The crew was not blamed for this, but the ATSB identified two safety issues. One, network aviation did not provide the flight crew with a diversion decision-making procedure for the circumstances where the flights encountered unforecast weather below landing minima. Two, network aviation did not include the threat of unforecast weather below landing minima in the controlled flight into terrain risk assessments. If you want to read more about this incident, you will find a link to the final report in the description below. And now, Let's talk about the rules. Believe it or not, but until recently, there have been no rules concerning phraseology for minimum fuel and fuel emergency. That was solved in 2012, when ICAO revised the guidelines in Annex 6, Volume 1, Section 47, in Flight Fuel Management. Under normal circumstances, an aircraft shall carry enough fuel to reach the destination, then fly to an alternate airport, and then fly for another 30 minutes at holding speed. The latter is known as final reserve fuel. If the pilot in command understands that unforeseen circumstances may result in landing at the destination aerodrome with less than final reserve, plus fuel required to proceed to an alternate aerodrome, the pilot in command shall request delay information from ATC. ATC may respond with the following phraseology. No traffic delay expected. Delay less than so and so many minutes. Expect so and so many minutes delay. Or expected approach time, so and so. When committed to land at an aerodrome, and any change of ATC clearance might result in a landing with less than final reserve fuel, the pilot in command shall declare minimum fuel. When declaring minimum fuel, you should not expect priority, because this is not an emergency. If air traffic control tells you there will be no delay, you are good. If ATC tells you there will be a delay, you should consider whether you need to declare fuel emergency. When it is calculated that the aircraft will land with less than final reserve on board, the pilot in command shall declare a fuel emergency. Mayday, 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 fuel. Air traffic control will acknowledge the message and clarify to the crew about the fuel status, persons on board, and whether they have dangerous goods on board. When possible, air traffic control will keep the aircraft at high altitude to save fuel and when relevant, inform about nearest airports and landing conditions. Air traffic control will keep the flight path and the runway clear of traffic, inform airport emergency services, and ensure the towing equipment is available. 
Accidents have happened because the flight crew have been vague about the fuel status and didn't inform that they were short of fuel until it was too late. There is no excuse for that. It is always better to declare emergency one time too many than not doing it. Okay, that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.